Hello and welcome to a very wet and very windy Cherbourg. Yes, we did just about manage to dock here last night and we are in relative safety compared to what it seems like out at sea. If you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we release a new cruise related video every week. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. We pre-booked an excursion yesterday and unfortunately for us uh, it was a very, very early start. So uh, around about quarter past seven we woke up and made our way up to the Borough Market just for a quick buffet breakfast. It was really quiet in there. It was there. really quiet. So where we've said before that the Borough Market is very busy, actually if you turn up about half seven-ish you are definitely going to get a seat because it was very, very quiet. So that meant we could grab a couple of coffees couple of juices and I had porridge with syrup and you had some cereal as per usual I'm quite enjoying my bowl of cereal first thing in the morning as it was really really quiet in there it was quite strange to see the servers behind the counters because obviously on board ambience it's not self-service standing around waiting for passengers to wake up because yeah. normally they are very very busy yeah very different there today. It was a quick breakfast for us. We headed back to our cabin, put on our walking shoes, got on our coats, our waterproofs, and grabbed our bags and headed off the ship. So as soon as we left the ship, the weather was not particularly nice. It was very cold. We made our way through Cherbourg Terminal, which is quite small, and we were greeted by the Ambassador Destinations team, who pretty much directed us straight onto our bus. Yeah, there were two coaches going on this tour today and we ended up on coach number two. We were leaving at 8.15am and we pretty much left bang on time. The excursion was very busy, pretty much every single seat on both coaches were full. As soon as we were all on board, off we went and explored the Normandy countryside. So the first stop on our excursion was saint mer Eglise. So this is a French town which was liberated by paratroopers during D-Day. In particular, it's got very strong connections to American troops and American forces because they were the first ones into this area of France. So when we arrived to the town itself, the first thing we could spot was a parachute on top of the church steeple, which had a paratrooper attached to it. Obviously, this is very unusual and it was explained that that actually did really happen in reality where there was a paratrooper who came down during D-Day and got stuck on the steeple. He apparently pretended to be dead for two hours in order to stay alive and escape the uh, Germans. Really interesting and it's like a little monument to him. The paratrooper that got stuck on the bell tower was called John Steele and there are lots of little tributes and memorials all around the town. Inside the church, it was really quite beautiful. They've got a number of stained glass windows and some of them have been replaced to memorialize the troops and what they went through on D-Day. After exploring the church and the main area, we made our way up to their town hall. Yes, and that was the Hotel de Ville. Outside the Hotel de Ville is the first marker on the Liberty Road. So this one has zero kilometers on it and they are all the way along the Liberty Road. They're there to commemorate the route in which Allied forces took when they retook Normandy. Our guide was really informative and she did say how the people of the local area had been affected and are still affected by the events of that time and just how many people had actually been killed in the local area not by the Germans but by the Allies in liberating the area and also she mentioned that there are still hundreds of unexploded mines and grenades being found every year in the local areas. Yeah, thousands of tons are recovered every year. It's yeah. fascinating. We spent about an hour in the town itself, walking around with the guide and she was very, very informative. Located in the town is also a dedicated museum. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to go in and have a look, but it did look really quite interesting from the outside. They have reconditioned tanks, anti-aircraft machinery. It looked really interesting and we definitely would go back. So from there, we jumped back on the coach and headed through the French countryside to a village with another one of these Liberty markers but we continued driving so we didn't have time to stop and arrived in Utah Beach. So Utah Beach was where the Americans made landfall on the continent and it looked absolutely impressive. 
really big flat beach while we were there a number of people were training to run horses horse trotting horse trotting really interesting so it is a really popular beach for the locals as well as tourists it's one of those beaches that do actually evoke a lot of emotions because you can just imagine the state of the beach itself and the hundreds of boats that would have been out at sea just off the beach as they landed and came into France so it is a really really poignant place Place to be. There is lots of different statues and markers and commemorative monuments along the beach itself. Although what they did say, they are suffering from coastal erosion at that beach and they are trying to protect it, but it may not last forever. Again, it was only a whistle stop tour. We only had around about 30 minutes just to have a look at the beach and some of the monuments. And like Tom said, very emotive place. And we could have spent a lot longer there. Yeah. Once again, there was a visitor center there, but we did not have time to visit it, unfortunately. But it was a good job we had our guide because she gave us lots of information. But before we knew it, it was time to head back onto the coach. As we were driving to our final destination, it was quite poignant because there were just so many abandoned bunkers from the war. So we headed to one of these bunkers, which was on a much larger scale. In fact, it was a battery itself. But unfortunately, we only were able to stop for a photo stop. So we're there in a maximum of 10 minutes. There's also a separate section to the battery that has recently opened and our guide tells us has remained unchanged for about 70 years. And so everything that's in that battery was originally there at the time. So once again, we would love to have spent much more time there. The cost was minimal. It was only two euros to get in. So it would have been a fascinating visit. Another fact that they gave us that the weight of this bunker was equivalent to four times the Eiffel Tower. So the amount of concrete used to build this four storey bunker underground must have been phenomenal. The bunker itself has four floors. And as Tom said, it was so cheap. You could walk in there and it would have been just like a snapshot from history. We both walked away from there and thinking, my God, we would have loved to have spent a good couple of hours just walking around and having a look. Really a little bit disappointed, but what can you do? What can we do? We then headed back onto the coach and back towards the ship. By that time, our tour was coming to an end. It was a really, really fascinating tour. Like we've said, we would have liked more time on that tour. However, we do understand that this tour was put on very last minute. We didn't know we were coming to Cherbourg until yesterday. So for ambassadors to even put on tours was great news. It wasn't all bad and it was definitely something that was worth doing. Once we arrived back to the port itself, we could tell the weather was still really bad. There were strong winds and we managed just about to climb up the gangway because it was very windy and back onto the ship. We had arrived just in time for lunch, so we headed straight to the Buckingham restaurant. This was the first time we were seated at a shared table, so it was quite an interesting experience. We sat there with a number of other diners who are all coincidentally on our excursion with us as well. So it was quite nice to have a little chat about what we've seen during the course of the morning. For my starter, I stuck to my usual trend and went for the soup. Once again, as with every other soup on board, it was exceptionally tasty. And luckily for us, it wasn't too busy, so it came in no time. For my starter, I opted to have the farmer salad. Pretty much it was a standard salad with just a couple of bits of brie. It was very tasty, really enjoyed it, but I suppose the brie made it French. For our mains, we both decided to go for the chicken fajitas. They came with a side of fries and some guacamole and mayonnaise, and they were actually really, really tasty. We thought it was a bigger portion than we were expecting because lunchtime tends to be a lighter portion, but it was very, very good, very tasty. For our dessert then, I opted for a cheese plate, which was absolutely delicious. The only thing that sort of changed was they gave me a couple of Ritz crackers instead of cream crackers. Mm -hmm. And then I went for the peach crumble. Once again, I've had a couple of crumbles on board now and they do them very well with a little bit of custard on top. Really, really good. Overall, relatively pleasant experience in there. We weren't in there long, maybe 45 minutes, uh, just about right for lunch. From there, we made our way back to the cabin because we'd had a really early start, early for us. So we just had a little bit of a power nap. While we were enjoying a well-deserved rest, we were abruptly woken up by a loud bang 
and an announcement over the tannoy informing all deck crew to their emergency stations. We headed straight for the window just to have a look to see if we could see anything outside and figure out what on earth was going on. Yes, there's quite a lot going on on the port side itself with many, many men in high-vis jackets dashing about. But what we did notice straight away was that the gangway had disappeared. And it looked like we were departing. I thought we'd overslept because the ship was moving away from the port, especially at the front. It looks like we were just about to pull away. We checked the schedule and there was no way that we could be parting it. So we quickly got dressed and headed up to deck 14 just to have a look, see if we could have a look over the side. And that's when we noticed that a couple of the moorings that secured the front of the ship were no longer attached and we were being pushed by the wind out to sea. It was quite a dramatic scene really that we were moving away further and further from the dock the gangway was nowhere to be seen there was lots of activity on on top deck with many other passengers stood peering over the side just to try and work out what on earth had happened but the weather was absolutely awful the wind was so strong it was raining it just wasn't good up there at all but there were a lot of passengers up there having a look at what had happened some of them had heard a loud bang and come up to see what was going on. So we stayed up on top deck just for a little while, just watching all of the commotion down on the dock side. And we had a look on the other side of the ship and there were three tugs trying to push us back to the port. And as time went on, more and more tugs arrived when at one point there were about seven tugs at the side of the ship pushing the ship against the wind back towards the dock side. It was quite a scene really that lots were going on. I've never seen this many tugs at the side of a ship before. After a little while they did manage to secure some additional moorings at the front. The tugs then continued to push us so that we were nicely docked alongside the port. There were lots of rumours going around that the gangplank had sank in into the sea and come away from the ship. We weren't sure whether that was correct at the time, but later on the captain did announce that the ship had come away from the moorings and that the gangway had gone into the sea. Unfortunately, they didn't have a spear one to hand, so it was a little bit of a while before they could get a replacement in and allow all of the disembarked passengers back on board the ship. So I think they were waiting for nearly three hours in the terminal. So there had been a couple of trips in the afternoon that luckily had already left before the gangway had come down, but they were now waiting in the terminal to get back on the ship. Fortunately, nobody was hurt during the incident, which is absolutely fantastic. And both ambience crew and the port crew handled the situation beautifully. Yes, they were so efficient with how they dealt with the situation and the captain even kept everyone informed. Unfortunately, it's just one of those things. And like Tom said, the weather was absolutely, I've never seen anything like it on a cruise ship before. The wind was really, really strong and you couldn't stand on deck for long without getting blown over. It was incredible. While they were getting the additional gangway, we did sit in the observatory and just watch the commotion through the window. Unfortunately, the weather wasn't that great because now it started to rain, but all was well and all the passengers managed to get on. The only issue was a lot of passengers that were in Sherbrooke missed their first dinner sitting. There was quite a buzz about the ship with passengers talking about what had happened. So we stayed in the observatory for a while and then headed back down to our cabin again. This evening we'd been invited to join the captain for dinner. So we're both really looking forward yeah. to it. Now we didn't really expect that he would attend given all of the events that uh, unfolded during the day. So we just got ourselves ready. It was another formal night, an unexpected formal night. So we headed down to the SW19 bar where they had a number of tables reserved for us with champagne flutes which was very nice we sat down with a couple of our fellow passengers and we were greeted by some of the members of the crew unfortunately the captain was unable to join us but sent a replacement instead <laughs> we had the lovely financial controller henry and he was fantastic i was quizzing him about his time working on disney ships he'd also worked at disney world so we had lots to talk about 
After a, a few complimentary glasses of bubbles and some nibbles, the restaurant manager came to escort us all to our table, which was lovely. The main captain's table is in the Buckingham restaurant. It's a small sectioned off area. At the captain's table then, there should have been eight guests, four couples. Unfortunately, one of the couples couldn't attend. So that just left six of us, plus our host, Lilia, and Henry, the financial controller. During our dinner, we had exactly the same menu as everybody else in the Buckingham restaurant. It was the farewell gala dinner and it was actually really, really good. For our appetizers, we decided to go for the Welsh rarebit and it was really, really delicious. Oh gosh, it didn't take us long to eat that, did it? Very, very tasty. We really enjoyed that. They did come round and give us a choice of red or white wine. Myself and Tom both opted for the red. red. For our soup then, we decided to have the uh, spring green consomme. The other soup on the menu was lobster bisque. The vegetable consomme was once again very tasty. Then onto our salad course and we decided to have the chicken salad. And again, it was absolutely fantastic. There was plenty of chicken uh, and we both thoroughly enjoyed it. The portion size is just enough for what we want at that point in the meal. And then on to the main. Now we hadn't had much luck with steak on board and we both chose to have the filet mignon. And the filet mignon was spectacular. Cooked to perfection. We were asked how we'd like it cooked. I went for medium rare, you had medium, and it was beautiful. The knife went through it like butter. It was very, very good. Absolutely delicious. It was a good size as well. Mm. So well done, Ambassador. That was a beautiful, beautiful bit of steak. During our steak, we got to experience a cruise tradition that we'd never ever seen before. Yep, there was an announcement in the restaurant that the parade was about to start and out came all the crew with a baked Alaska parade and it was fantastic. If you've never experienced this before, like we hadn't, it was something quite unexpected but very enjoyable. What you have to do, you have to get your napkin off your lap and start swishing it around in the, <laughs> in the air while the crew paraded around with their bag to Laskers and some sparkly candles. It was all quite an event and the whole restaurant got involved. It was absolutely fantastic to watch and experience. And um, why don't other cruise lines do that? I think some do, but we have not yet experienced one. So this is a first for us. And what was also nice is that the chefs came out of the galley as well, and we got to see some of the chefs. After the excitement of the baked Alaska parade and our filet mignon, it was time for our dessert, of yeah, course. Because it was the baked Alaska parade, I went for the baked Alaska and it was very nice, really enjoyed it. One of the first times I've had baked Alaska, surprisingly on a ship, but it was done very well. And I've had baked Alaska a number of times on a cruise ship <laughs> and I've never enjoyed them. So this evening I just went for the good old cheese board and it was absolutely delicious. That was not the end of our meal because after that we were offered petit pours. They were very tasty, snapped up a couple of the chocolates really quickly because they looked delicious. All in all, we had fantastic company. There was great chat. It was lovely to chat to some of the crew. The head chef came to the table as well and had a chat with us. The food and beverage manager came and had a chat with us. It was a really, really great experience. All in all, we must have left the meal around about 9.45. It did take a little while which was great because we thoroughly enjoyed ourselves, but we then headed straight to the Palladium Theatre for tonight's performance. And then we were surprised to be greeted by all the crew standing outside the theatre. They were there ready and waiting because I think they were going to be heading up on stage. But first of all, we were asked to wait in a queue before we got in. We wondered why there was a queue happening. Well, it turns out it was for a really positive thing that we were all given another glass of bubbles. That was really nice. We didn't have to order any drinks tonight in the theatre. We had a complimentary glass of bubbles and the theatre was very busy when we got in there. We think the theatre was busy because as we said earlier a lot of passengers were on shore for a little bit longer than they thought they were going to be and some of them did miss their first sit-in dinner reservation but also it was a special occasion and it might have been that free alcohol that tempted Trip, them in tempted them back <laughs> yeah before West End Wonders began the crew did all come on stage they were introduced by assistant cruise director Dave and it was really nice to give three cheers to the staff and to celebrate the ship really really 
really good atmosphere. The staff, you could see, were really appreciative of everybody's applause and it was a great experience. Then on to the main event, West End Wonders. What a fantastic show. We keep saying this about every show they've put on, but this one truly was brilliant. It featured some of our favourite musicals and some of those classic songs that everybody would recognise. They did songs from musicals such as Hairspray, Evita, Les Mis, Miss Saigon. Really, really good. Les Mis was the last one they did and it really roused the crowd and they had a standing ovation at the end, which they thoroughly deserved. Again, the show did go a little bit longer than an hour. It was fantastic. It really, genuinely really good. was. Like we said, there's not much time between different shows of an evening, so we had to dash up to the observatory where they had the band jam and we caught the final few songs of Band Jam. We wish we would have been able to see it all, but because of the theatre show and the timings, as we've said before, couldn't catch the star. The final few songs that we did catch of Band Jam were fantastic. For those who haven't been to a Band Jam before or seen them on other ships, it's where all the musicians from across the ship come together to make one super band. The observatory was so busy. There were people on the dance floor, there were people standing, watching. All of the onboard bands and entertainers took part and it was absolutely incredible. Very surprised that Phoebe, who's an onboard actor, was there playing the drums, which surprised us so. Multi-talented. Hidden talent that we did not know about. Unfortunately, we did only catch the last 15 minutes, but we both thoroughly enjoyed it and we did get up and have a little bit of a dance as well. We did, yes. Then it was time for DJ Ryan and his late night disco. We did order one final drink. We sat there and chatted to some of our fellow passengers and then headed off to grab that 24 hour tea and coffee before bed. We did actually walk across uh, deck 14 just to have a look at Sherberg at night and we did notice that there was still a tug going full pelt pushing us towards the dock because the wind was still quite bad. We could not believe it so by this time it was probably around 1am and this tug must have been there through the night still pushing us. At this point, we still hadn't heard an update on when we were leaving, so we presumed it wouldn't be long though before we did leave. So we headed to the buffet. I grabbed myself a cup of tea and we headed back to our room. Unfortunately, no snacks this evening because of all of the issues and commotion with the wind. We just didn't have a chance to get into afternoon tea to stock up on those sausage rolls. <laughs> so Never I'll mind. just have to make do. Uh, it's not as if you haven't eaten it. You've had a big five course meal tonight. Right. Thanks for watching our unexpected day on ambience in Sherberg. If you've got any comments or questions just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and also hit that bell icon to never miss a video from us. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.